There is a new patient at the McGuinness Psychiatric Unit at Prestwich in Manchester. 17-year-old Beth has an eating disorder, is depressed, and also feeling suicidal. When I look at that, I just see that all the fat on my arms, all the fat on my hips, like all the fat on my arms there. I like to see the bone, the collarbone and the hip bones and the ribs, and like the thigh gap and, you know, but since we don't have a full length mirror, really, it's pretty hard to see all that. My friend put together like loads of pictures. That, that one's obviously taken at school. It must be in year 11. I've had like an eating disorder since year nine. One time I was at my auntie's house down south and I just went to the toilet and I was sick. And then I went downstairs to my, I don't know why I made myself sick, I just made myself sick. And I went downstairs to my mum like, something had got in my head saying, no, you're not allowed that, don't eat that. And ever since then it's just been there. Yeah. Like it's there all the time. It calls you for na names and like, calls you fat and stuff. It sucks. That's my old outfit. That's when I first started losing weight though. So how long ago was that one taken? About three years ago. How does that make you feel? Fat. <laughs> but while on the unit, Beth's already unhealthy relationship with food is becoming more pronounced. She started a diary documenting her attempts to not eat. Put like, day I've gone 100 hours with no food or drink. It makes you feel like the pain, the pain is like the hunger pains just make you feel happy. It sounds deluded, that, doesn't it? No. But sometimes purging's not enough, like, making yourself sick isn't enough because it only removes about, at the best of times, only like 50% of the calories that you've ate. So then you've got to exercise as well. And then it got to 121 hours, then 133 hours. The staff are becoming increasingly concerned about Beth's refusal to eat. She won't even go into the dining room. Out of the 15 patients on the ward at any one time, there will always be two or three with an eating disorder. The unit has a special dietitian who helps anorexic and bulimic patients fight the disease. So she's tending to, to miss a lot of meals completely. So I was quite concerned about her nutritional intake, that if anything, that it seems to have got worse compared with when she first came in. In terms of the eating disorder pathway, what difference would it make to her if she used to go down that road? She would have the supervision at meal times and after meal times as part of the Rainbow Programme. Maybe that might be to go down that road. The time for gentle encouragement is over. Hey, it's Anne on the McGuinness unit. Um, it's just regarding Beth and his leave. She hasn't been given it. Beth won't be getting any home leave until she starts eating. Staff nurse Anne rings her mum to let her know. And they've decided to put her on what we call the rainbow programme. The unit needs to take a harder line on Beth now. And Anne and Matt must break the news to her. Just listen to Anne, okay? Oh, why? Right, just, just listen to Anne, yeah? If you leave. any questions, we can discuss that. Yeah. After. Have I got okay. it? Overnight is no. Purely because, well, you're not eating. And I know you're having it ad, ad hoc when your mum's, because I've phoned your mum up and I've told your mum. And she's said about what you've had or, you know, whenever it were last time you went out. Yeah. yeah. But unfortunately, it's not enough to sustain. Oh, it is. No, it isn't. You need to give us some of that control now. It means that you'll have somebody with you at meal times, one to one. Oh no, please. You need to let us help you. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. People. What did you have for your dinner? Nothing. What did you have for breakfast? Nothing. You won't let us weigh you. That'll be changing. Why? No. What's your biggest fear? That I've put on weight since I've been in here anyway. Mm. 
Because I know I am. How do you know? I can just tell. Why? Somebody will actually pick your meal for you. No one else is putting it in. I have to pick it up and put it in my mouth and I can say no to doing mm, that. Yeah, but if we're telling you to do it... I can still say no. She's still in denial. She's not ready to change, not ready to accept that she has got something wrong with her. I think deep down she does know she's got a problem because she's not willing to get on the scales, you know? That's where her honest answer will lie. She'll be a challenge. Uh, they all are because they're in control. But as you've just heard with Beth, she's not in control. Mashing it up a little bit so we get plenty of juice. There's not as much juice as there usually is. The Rainbow Programme offers a set meal system. Now, if a young person is really struggling with the solid food, they can always fall back on uh, a supplement drink. It's a very high calorific drink. So you might have 150, 180 mils of this supplement, which basically substitute a full meal. But the Rainbow Plan will only work if Matt can actually persuade Beth to enter the dining room. No, no. We need to at least go in the dining room and try and make a start. Okay? Just think, Beth, this could be the start of you turning your life around. Otherwise, we're just going to go down and down and down, and it's going to be more difficult for you to come up, you know? Yeah. If she carries on refusing to eat, the next stage could be to section Beth under the Mental Health Act. Beth has been on the Rainbow Programme for a week. She is still being supervised every meal time. I think my room door's already open now. Yeah, it's open. But she's rebelling against the staff. <laughs> Diet Coke. I've been banned from having it. I use it as a meal supplement. So I get filled up and don't have to eat, basically. Because I'm too full. Exercise is another form of rebellion. She has been walking up and down the corridor for half an hour to burn calories. Still reporting that she wants to die and saying it will be easier that way, then no one has to worry. Um, the review team are increasingly concerned about Beth's lack of progress. She's not complying with the rainbow plan, limited intake, trying to hide food and tissues, continues to refuse to have blood tests and continues to refuse to be weighed. Um, Dr. Fracho? She said she would never ever eat again. We might have to request. I think we'll just request for a mental health act assessment. A mental health assessment could lead to Beth being sectioned. They keep warning me with section, but it won't happen. Just trying to scare me. A girl who's become good friends with Beth is leaving today. And when someone leaves, it's always an emotional time for those that are left behind. She's still not complying with the meal plans. She still won't have her bloods done. She still won't jump on the scales. She has been given until Monday, or they will be seriously considering a section. Beth has been in the unit for two months. Time is running out for her and she seems aware of it. But even so, it takes her several minutes to eat two pieces of carrot. I'm not eating anymore. 
Try it if it's the mice. No. Find some of the mice and some of the protein. No. I just can't do it. What? I'm not, I'm not. What's I'm not saying you can't do it. I just, no, I can't. No. What's, explain to me. Matt won't let her give up. If she won't eat her meal, he will get the equivalent calories in a fruit drink for her. How many calories are in it? Um, it doesn't matter how many calories are in it, right? I'm not going to get into that with you. <clears throat> it's exactly the same as what that would be. So we're going to say that you have half the vegetables. I had okay? more than half the vegetables. No, you had the carrots. I'm not going to argue with you. You had half. But I did eat it. You eat some of it. Yeah, but, but I'm not having, no. Right? I'm going to half that. It's 15 mils. No, I'm right? not having it at and all. And if being honest, I'm being generous there. Right? No, I'm not having it. There's been so many young people with eating difficulties, yeah? And I know that the first time for them is the hardest. But with support of staff and distraction of supervision, it is made easier. And I promise you that, it will get easier. The hardest part is taking hold of it. That's me. Mm. Right, you need to hold it, mm. okay? That's the most difficult part. Right, come. What we found with your people in the past is ignore the negative voice, yeah? The one that's saying don't do it. And listen right back there, yeah? The little voice of Beth saying, go and do it. Because really, you know, you, you know you need to do it, don't you? Yeah? Okay. Just think of this of you getting back out there, yeah? Going out, getting up with your dance. The gymnast. Yeah. Think of how happy it'd make your parents. Yeah. Just say, well, yeah, I'm on a meal plan at this moment in time, but look, I'm, I'm cracking on with it. Hmm? I find it quite difficult, but I'm doing it. Yeah. Come on, take hold of it. I'm not going to make a big ordeal about if you, <laughs> you know, if you drink it all. Yeah. We're not going to make a big song and dance about it. Right. Cool. One sip took Beth over 20 minutes. How much would you say is in a sip? About five mils. What's too loud? It's a start. It's like every little piece of you in your body is telling you not to eat it. Don't do it, you'll get fat, don't do it, don't do it. And you've got people actually in reality that are saying eat, 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 and you just, you've got an argument in your head. The way things are going with my Beth, I'm thinking that this girl is going to be with us for quite a while. Anorexics do get hungry, but we just learn to ignore it and fight it off. And then food just becomes the enemy. Bye to people. Beth continues to refuse to eat and is summoned to a meeting behind closed doors. She never believed it would happen to her. But now she's been sectioned under the Mental Health Act. Now they can physically like pick me up and restrain me and put me on the scales and like they can do whatever they want and whatever they can to get it because apparently it's in my best interest and because I'm too ill, I can't see what's right for me or something like that, <laughs> which sucks. Uh, it's a vegetarian no, option. It's only half a portion, no, isn't it? 
very, very few chips. No, no. no. Take a bit few more off. Just that. Yeah, that's fine. And just a small, tiny bit of peas. Beth's on a treatment called the Rainbow Program, yeah. which means she has to consume a set amount of calories every day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner are eaten under the watchful eye of a member of staff. A few mouthfuls of peas is not a lot, but it's an improvement on recent weeks. They don't see it as progress, they just want you to eat everything, and that's when it'll be progress. But as soon as you start eating everything, they'll just up it and like, give you more. Since she was put on a section, Beth has started to comply a bit more. She's beginning to eat at mealtimes. They think one of the reasons why I got an eating disorder in the first place was because I tried to control things in my life, and now they're taking the control of food away from me. I, yeah, I, I don't like it. <laughs> Beth may be eating more, but it's making her feel guilty. So she's developed a way of punishing herself. I cut one I've eaten as a punishment. That's when the voice is more in control. It, it makes me feel better because it's like... It's all just coming out in the blood. All the thoughts are just coming out in the blood as it comes out of your body. One day I walked into a room and she was cutting herself and I took it off her. Stopped her cutting herself. Such a good friend. <laughs> I did thank her the day. I, I hated her that day, but the day after I did thank her. People on the outside, they judge you on the way you look. Like, if they saw me sitting here like this, they'd probably like, oh, you're too fat to have an eating disorder. Like, cos I am, I'm, I'm fat. I'm, I'm just fat. And I just don't think that'll ever change. And now I've got to go and eat dinner. Beth is continuing to comply with the eating plan. Although she may still hide the odd piece of food at mealtimes. They don't know. But I break it up, put it in my hand, and then put it in my pocket when they don't look. And I hide it underneath more food. Cos that way they're getting what they want and I'm getting what I want, so everyone's happy. When a friend visits Beth later in January, she has made a big improvement in terms of her eating plan. It was my CPA yesterday, and they said they're going to keep reviewing my section every week, so... ..maybe in the next few weeks I'll be taking off that. Well, that's good then. Yeah, and my meal plan's been increased again. And I've moved from... I'll show you. I've moved from the anorexia nervosa band to the underweight band. Where did you start off? Bottom end of green band, anorexia nervosa. Now I'm just in underweight. So what's, what's after that? Fat. <laughs> it's not fat after that, is it? <laughs> it is. No, it isn't. Yeah. Well, I'm happy you're getting better anyway. Oh, Gavin! <laughs> <laughs> I've missed you, I actually have. I miss you too. Everyone at college misses you as well. Do they? Yeah. Like Beth, who has to stay on the ward. I'm 17. <laughs> and they fit me. Beth was admitted four months ago with an eating disorder and depression. She would not eat for days at a time. They have gone 100 hours with no food or drink. She wouldn't comply with staff and self-harmed regularly. That helps it fade. I had that bandage today and that steric strip today. You won't let us weigh you. That'll be changing. No, it won't. 
What's your biggest fear? That I've put on weight since I've been in here anyway. Because mm. I know I have. That was three months ago. Since then, Beth's condition has improved. She started eating at mealtimes and is self-harming less. Being on a section means she must comply with her treatment. She has finally started to be weighed. This is the first time Beth has allowed the cameras to film her on the scales. Fifty one point. You wanna get him ready? When are you going getting back in? <laughs> Since she was sectioned, her food intake has increased, meaning her weight today is fifty one kilograms. Is but this is still under her target weight of fifty seven. I think it was more anxiety before because I was really unsure of my weight and I thought it would be like put on twenty million stone and but I've not. They've got to weigh me anyway, so I can be discharged. I still get scared because I don't want to put on weight, but you've got to. Like, it's the illness that's telling you not to put on weight. In recent weeks, Beth, who is sectioned under the Mental Health Act, has been making progress. For the first time in two months, she is allowed to eat on her own. Over the past two weeks, I've been taking off supervision for my snacks. I've got more leave. It's been it's been good, like spending the time with my family. It's weird and it's scary, but it's just because I've been stuck in here for loads of time. Being in hospital has meant Beth has had to give up some of the things she loves most. Before she was admitted, she had taken part in many dance competitions and won lots of trophies. It made you feel a bit sad. No, it makes me feel a bit sad. Yeah, a bit emotional. Yeah. But that's the thing, you know, you, you can start up your dancing and everything like that again, can't you? But due to her eating disorder, she is not allowed to exercise because she'd lose weight. So that is still the case? Compliance with weight monitoring and meal plan remains improved as much as Now the staff must decide if Beth has made enough progress to return to dancing. This is going to be burning off energy. Is a weight going to okay. plummet so because of this? So activity levels in relation to her diet yeah. and things like that, isn't it? So where we are in terms of how much she can tolerate, there isn't as such. This leave remains contingent on the presentation. Of so it belongs to so nurse's discretion. So it so. is on yeah. that particular day. So it, it's been a whole. It's been a long five months, but Beth is finally back on the dance floor. Just seeing everyone and like how everyone's missed me. I'm just really glad to be back because I'd never thought they'd let me back like, once I've been put in the unit. The dance class shows just how far Beth has come in her recovery and she's even started writing a book about her experiences with mental illness. Mental health is so common yet there's so much stigma surrounding it. We are all just normal, everyday people. In fact, walking along a busy street today, you probably passed over 150 people with some form or severity of mental health. I have a mental illness. Am I ashamed? Not anymore. I admit, yeah, I did used to hide and lie about my illness, but now why should I have to lie about something that has made me grow into a stronger and overall better person? Why hide something that makes me unique? Fantastic. I mean, that just gives people tremendous insight into what it's like to be you, really, and what it's like to suffer from such a horrible condition, really. Which one's on yours? It's actually really nice. Beth is now starting to look to the future for the first time. I'm going to get discharged from here. I'm going to go home, sleep in a nice, comfy bed with new bedding, new TV cover, new pillows. I still want things to go faster than they're going, but things are going like really fast now. Like my weight's more stable now, and I've got more. I've got the energy to actually do things. The last three readings, she'd yeah. all been rounded to fifty-one point five. That's true. It's maintained. Yes. It's not it dipped again. Yes. It's the trend of two readings that we saw. Mm -hmm. That was the initial sort of aim, really, yes. isn't it? The review team is pleased with her progress but need to ensure she continues to gain weight. 
We're looking at um, a leave date being around the 25th. This is the last bit of her recovery that she really needs to achieve while she's still with us, mm. and it's a difficult one for her. Mm. And we have to concentrate on the fact as well that we need to achieve it this week, really, for her then to, you know, focus her, her mind uh, towards discharge. Mm -hmm. After nearly six months in the unit, the end is in sight. It's now up to her to prove she's ready to go. The morning of the weekly reviews, and there is a sense of anticipation on the ward. Beth has heard that the staff are discussing her possible discharge. Stop talking about me! But with her recent self-harming, Beth's unsure that she's done enough to convince them she is ready to go home. I'm dying. I'm not all three of you are talking to me, are you? <laughs> Shall I pull out? Because Krishna is there with yeah. Lucy. All right, that's fine. I'm in CP anyway. So, you know, if any question, bring it back. Have you got a discharge date? Because that's what I want out of you. Afa! See you. Yeah. Wait, okay. this week. Shall we? What's the discharge date? Twelve days later, and Beth is finally going home. It's been six months since she first arrived at the McGuinness unit. I got taken off my section on um, Thursday, and then today I'm going. In some ways, it did save my life because I, was, I wasn't really well when I first came. But I won't miss these hospital blankets. Disgusting. I'm stronger than I thought I was. I thought that the only way to stop all, like, things in my head was to just give up and, like, get rid of me and, like, kill myself. But now I've learned that. You don't have to do that. You just need to talk and be more open and communicate with people. And that's how you can get better. See you later. See ya. Mm. Oh, hi. Well done. See you out and about. Yeah. I'm going to cry. <laughs> Bye, Steve. Try not to get killed, yeah? I try not. I, I try my best. <laughs> I try my best. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye. Michaela. Bye. 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 Bye.